a quick video this week where we're looking at embedding audio into PowerPoint and Google Slides and the controls available to level and trim in those apps. Let's go. Hi guys, I'm Ant and this is EdTech Music, where we look at how technology can help class teachers deliver curriculum music with more engagement and fun. Today we're looking at how we can embed backing tracks into PowerPoint and Google Docs. So I'm going to start off here on Windows and what I'm going to do is just bring up a folder with some backing tracks and drag one onto the page. And you can see when I do that, it's now embedded this icon of the sound on the page. Now from here, there's quite a lot I can do with it. I can first of all just play it to check it's working and I can jump around in that recording using this level bar. That's You can see the seconds going up and down as I move around so I can check it works. I can also jump backwards and forwards in increments if I want to. Now the first thing I can do with this backing track, having clicked on it, is set a level. So maybe this is intro music to an assembly or to a performance, and I wouldn't want it quite as loud as I want everything else. Let's take it down a bit with that slider there, and it's gonna remember that for me now. Let's just duplicate this slide for a minute, there we go. Now at this point, this slide potentially might be a backing track for a song that's accompanying a soloist or maybe even a choir or a group of children singing. So at this point, I'd want the song louder. So here, I'm gonna drag the slider higher and it's gonna remember that level for me. Let's go back to the first one and you can see now that volume slider is still lower where it was. If I go back to the second one, this volume slider is as high as it was before. So now they're on different slides. It's using the same source track, but the properties of each one are different inside each slide. Now I dragged the track onto the page before. Now an alternative to this would be to go and find the insert menu next to home and go all the way along to media. And inside media, you can see I've got this audio there. And if I click on audio, it's still gonna give me two options. I can add audio that's already on my PC or I can record audio using the built-in microphone. I'm gonna click on audio on my PC and from here I can add a backing track as well. Let's double click on that and it's going to download it and pop it on the page. So there you can see I've now got this track available as well. They're both on the page, but when I click on one, I have the controls below it there, and if I click on the other, I have the controls below it there. And you might have noticed for each one, when I click on it, the ribbon at the top changes, and I now have two new options. They're in orange, because I'm on dark mode, but they're in an alternative color to show that they're a menu that only appears when you're clicking on a particular item. And lots of things behave like that, pictures, videos, tables, all sorts of things. So if I click on audio format, it's gonna give me tools to change how this icon appears, but I'm really interested in the playback controls here. Now I can do quite a lot of things with it. I'm gonna to jump to my Mac for a minute to show you how this behaves in the browser. And you can see I'm on the browser version of PowerPoint. It doesn't really matter if I'm on a Mac or PC at this point because it's in the browser, so it behaves the same. You can see I've got the same PowerPoint open. And when I click on the icon for the track here, you can see it brings up a similar play control with a level that lets me move around within the track. And then I've got the same volume slider. It's just they're both horizontal rather than vertical here. In the browser version, I can't drag and drop straight onto the page like I could in the desktop app. So here I have to go to the insert menu, then all the way along to find audio, and I can choose the track I want to insert there. Let's stay in the browser for a minute because we're gonna have a look at Google Slides and make a comparison. So here I am in Google Slides. Now, I can't drag and drop onto the page again like I couldn't do in PowerPoint in the browser because it's another web-based tool. So I'm gonna to go to Insert Menu and I'm gonna go down to Audio. And here you can see in my OneDrive, I've got some tracks available. And it's showing me the most recent at the moment because if I went into my Google Drive itself, then I've had to add some tracks there in advance. So you can't sort of drag them in as you go, you need to add them in beforehand. Now from here I can click on the track I want and select it and now it's on the page and you can see if I hover over that track I get again a really similar layout. I've got a play button, I've got the time available and how far through that time I am with a slider that I can control. I've got a volume slider, again horizontal a bit like PowerPoint and then if I click on the dots at the end again playback speed. So really similar to what I was experiencing for PowerPoint in the browser as well. Now, when I click on that, you can see 
just like in PowerPoint, some extra menus appearing. So here I've got the format options down the side, a whole number of options. Now down the bottom, these are comparable to the ones we had when we looked at Properties tab in PowerPoint. They affect more like how the icon appears. But above that, this audio playback area, you can see I've got tools that are to do with how the audio plays. So on the icon itself, we had the volume leveling tool here. And actually at the side, I've got the same thing here. I've got a volume when presenting level so that I can change how loud or quiet this particular track is. Not the whole PowerPoint, just this track. Now I've got what start playing. So I can start playing this track on click, as in I'd have to click on that icon while the presentation's running, or automatically. And when I click on automatically, it's gonna start playing it automatically when I get to this slide. So it may be that you want on click, because you've got more control, or if it's gonna happen as soon as the slide comes up, you can click automatically and then it's one less thing to think about. Now you've also got hide icon when presenting. This is a comparable tool to the PC and, and PowerPoint as well, because you can make the icon disappear so that you don't see it on the slide, you only see it when you're editing. Now something I prefer to do is to drag the icon off. I tend to view my slide decks with this gap around it anyway, so that I can see what other things that I've got ready, you can click on hide icon or you can drag it off. But as I say, I quite like that because it doesn't get stuck behind the layers of other things like pictures and backdrops and videos that might already be on the slide. Loop audio is going to keep that track going. When it gets to the end, it's going to start again. And you've also got stop on slide change. So that means when you leave this slide and go to the next slide, it's going to stop playing rather than carry on playing over the slides. So we're back in the browser version of PowerPoint now. And let's have a look at that more fully. Here, if I click on the track, you can see I get this extra audio menu appearing at the top, like we identified before in the desktop version. And now I've got the choice to play it, to work with the volume and change that. And actually I've got a choice here about, again, whether I want it to start automatically when this slide comes up, or when the track is clicked on itself. In terms of audio options, I've got the similar thing that I had on Google Slides a minute ago. Play across slides, so that it carries on playing even when I go to the next slide. Loop until stopped. Again, it'll get to the end, it'll start again. Hide during show and rewind after playback. So it may be that I might wanna go back to this slide, in which case it'll rewind it back to the start automatically. Again, that hide during show, my preference would be to bring the icon off the deck so that it doesn't show. Only what's on the actual slide of the deck is what appears on the screen or the projector or the, the you know TV, whatever you're showing it on. So dragging it off the side is the same for me as clicking on that hide icon, but means that I don't get quite the, I don't get it lost. Now I've also got other options here. Play in background. So it'll carry on even when other things are going on on the slide. And then some options to do with the styling again, but I'm not interested in those because I don't want to see the icon ideally. Right, let's take a look and see what this looks like on the PC. So we'll jump back to that PC view again and then look at what else we get here. Let me click on the icon and you can see I get that audio format tools. We said that were to do with what it looks like as an icon, but I want the playback tools because that's much more to do with how it sounds. I've got some additional things here on the desktop. I've got play across slides that we were looking at before and loop until stopped. And here, if I click on the drop down, I've got in click sequence, which is different to automatically and when clicked on. This is a little bit more to do with animation. So automatically is gonna play when the slide starts, remember. When clicked on is gonna happen only when I click on this icon with the mouse. And um, in click sequence is a third option that we didn't get on any of the others. It's gonna mean that it will be part of the sequence of clicks. So my first click might bring up this slide. It would then be my next click or advancing of the PowerPoint, that that's when it plays, which is different. We haven't had that on any of the other options. And to my mind, that's the most useful because if I have a backdrop that on the slide that represents maybe a scene of a production, or maybe it's the song title and the choir are stood in front of the screen, then when I click on that, it's just gonna bring the slide up with that content. Then if I've chosen in click sequence, when I advance one more time, then it's gonna start the track. So it just gives me that little bit more flexibility and breathing room rather than the track starting immediately that this slide appears. So it's a good one, that. 
So the final part for me is looking at how to trim and fade tracks, which is something we can only do on the desktop apps. And it's the same on PC and Mac, so we'll take a look at those. Now, if I dive into my PC again, here you can see when I click on the track, I get that playback tool appear as an extra ribbon. And in the middle of that here, I've got trim audio and then some fade options here. Well, we could use those, but I'm gonna click on trim because trim brings up a whole extra pop-up. And when I look in here, you can see I've got this tiny wavetable version of the entire track. Now, being able to sort of interpret wavetable is a really good skill to have, really useful, um, because it's showing us essentially the loud and quiet areas of the track. We can see whether it gets thicker and thinner. That's representing loudness and quietness. So that's the easiest way to interpret this. And you can see at the very beginning, there's this empty gap. So one thing I can do is grab this green slider and drag it more towards that. And you can see that this number has gone up because that is now the start time. And that's the same effect as if I'm clicking on this here. And you can see the green uh, tool is moving forward and the numbers are going up as I'm getting closer. And what I'm trying to do is get really close so that the very second that I hit that advanced button so that the slide moves forward and the track starts, the track begins immediately. So I don't get any sort of sloppy empty space in the performance. And I'm gonna do the same at the end. I'm gonna take the ending of the track and bring it right close to the end of the song. Let's do that. There we go, that's pretty good. Um, I can adjust it. And what I can do is I can click on that place where I've, I've put the slider and I can use the play tool to now play it to see if it does start immediately or jump back and forwards a bit like I could on the tools above. If I click on OK, then it's now going to change those settings. So if I click on trim audio again, when I bring that back up, you can see those settings have been kept. Just to be really clear, I haven't edited the original mp3 file. It's not a destructive form of editing. The original file is still the same. It's still got those few seconds of, of silence at the beginning. But in this particular slide, that's how I edited the track. If I had this track on another slide, I could trim it differently and it wouldn't impact what's happening on this slide either. Let's just jump across and have a look on the Mac. If I click on a sound file and go to playback, I've got exactly the same tools. I've got the trim audio there and here you can see it gives me a really similar version where I've got this wavetable tool and I can grab the start slider there and grab the end slider and bring them in as well as the master volume and I can click on trim and in that way it's going to let me do the same thing on the Mac version or the Windows version of PowerPoint. If we finally look at fade in and out we're going to get a similar thing so here I can now fade in the track and fade out the track by taking these numbers up so now if I do that you can see I've got two seconds at the beginning of the track where a fade in is going to happen and then a two seconds at the end of the track when a fade out is going to happen. Really similar, but it just means it's going to gradually build in volume and then gradually decrease in volume at the very end. Nice alternative. Rather than having to edit the track in something else like Audacity and manually put in a fade, you can just do it in PowerPoint. And these tools in PowerPoint are really handy because it means you don't have to take the track you've been given out to a different editor and destructively edit that track so that it's, it's a permanent change. It means you can drop the track in PowerPoint and make these very soft changes that don't affect the original track. I just want to show you some finishing options for this. So let's click on this version of the slide. And here you can see I've just dropped a picture as the background. There it is. I can move it around. And that means that if this was a production, then using a projector as a background can work really effectively because actors can be stood in front of this scene and it sets the scene, but it also keeps your tracks nicely in place. So you don't need a different app to run backgrounds than you do to play your backing tracks. A different option for this might be concerts or performances. Here you can see you could have this up on a screen to show the song that's about to be sung and whoever's singing it. And again, you've got the track already on the slide good to go so you don't need different apps you're just using a presentation tool to play both and lastly something I often do is add a graduated image below the bottom of the slide and that means that I can have my choir stood in front of this screen and the black obviously doesn't show no light shines from the projector where it's black and by graduating that out it means that 
singers can be stood in front of the projector screen without the light shining in their face or having different pictures appear to be on top of them and it's just a nice way to do that so if any of that is of interest how you do that in powerpoint or in google slides then please let me know in the comments and i'll focus more videos around those things in the future so that's it for this video we've looked at temporary and quick edits to backing tracks and any sound file in powerpoint and google slides if you wanted to do something more permanent or that changed the track properly, you'd want to do it in something like Audacity. I've got several videos on Audacity that I'm going to link above now. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please hit the like button, consider subscribing, and perhaps from the top of the description, join our newsletter as well, so that you hear about everything straight after it's happened. See you again.